Hello and welcome to this edition of Tips and Tricks. Now today I'm probably going to be introducing most of you to an old school finesse technique that you've never fished. Or some of you might not even have ever heard of it. This technique dates back to the 80s and it also predates the drop shot. The drop shot came out in the 90s because Aaron Martin met a few Japanese people and they showed him that technique and well now everybody carries a drop shot. Everybody fishes a drop shot. But I'm pretty sure this technique you might have not even ever heard of. And it's called split shotting. This is the technique right here. A little teeny BB sized split shot and a little finesse worm. Now you might look at that and go, well, that's pretty much the same thing I do with the drop shot. Yeah, but see this thing compared to the drop shot, I mean the drop shot you have the weight at the bottom, you have it right there, it's in the middle of the line. Any movement you do and anything like that when you're working it, it moves the worm a lot. This technique, and it's kind of like a smaller, I don't know, Carolina rig, but you can fish this in a lot of different, way different areas than you would do a Carolina rig. But when you have it like this, compared to the drop shot, like I said, the drop shot, when you move it, that worm just like any little movement, that thing, this thing just sort of slowly flutters along behind that weight. And with the drop shot, you know, your drop shot, if you're trying to fish it over weeds or brush and that, the weight, you try to pick it up, sure, you try to make that thing longer, but the weight goes and it falls through the weeds and all that other stuff. When you fish this thing on weeds and that, it just, it comes right over it because there's line on each side of that weight. This weight won't drop into the weeds. It just comes right over the top of it. And then this little uh, weightless, uh, not weightless, but little worm and that comes right over the top with it. And when you get on rocks and chunk rock, you know, you get that's where you get the freaking drop shot hooked up a lot. And it falls into the cracks and you get stuck in between them. Even on chunk rock and that, this won't, because of the way that line is, this won't fall in between the rocks. It just comes right over it. Now, I haven't, I haven't fished this technique in a long time, probably because you need it on a spinning rod. This is way too light and the way it is you, you can't really throw it on a bait caster and you know me I, even on my drop shot and everything else I use a bait caster. So I haven't really fished this in a long time but I'm going to be doing some shows coming up where I'm I'm actually fishing this technique. And the best thing to run on is like this a five, four or five inch worm maybe even a six inch. Um, you can also run like little three inch, three and a half inch beavers on it. You can run little crankbaits on it and like I said obviously spinning reel most people fish it on like six to ten pound line and this is this is the one we always used when we did this technique is the the BB sized split shot split shots come in a lot of different sizes now I think the biggest they come is up to about eight ounce you want to go a little heavier if you're fishing a little bit deeper water and most people will set it up like this about a about a foot away from the split shot. A foot up to uh, maybe 18 inches. Depending on the situation, some people will go up to two feet, even up to three feet behind it, especially on certain grass. And you want, as far as the hook, you want a, a one-aught or a two-aught light wire EUG. I said I haven't fished this in a long time. I found this as a little uh, round end. I think it's a one-aught. But you want a one to two-aught finesse wire, light wire EUG hook. And most people, when they fish these, they throw them out and they kind of work them like Carolina rig. They just drag them kind of sideways over stuff with the rod tip. They don't, you know, really like, but I like to actually have it up, have it in my hand and I like kind of pick it up and maybe just kind of wiggle it a little bit and then let it drop down. You see, unlike the drop shot, when you're wearing the drop shot, it's keeping that worm in pretty much the same spot. You got how much line out, it's working at about that level. This thing, when you come to a log or a brush or something, this comes over it and then you pull this and it drags over it and then just kind of slowly falls over it. A rock, it kind of drags and just kind of finesses through it. And even, you know, it'll stay up on top of the weeds, but you get a hole in them and it'll, the, the split shot will kind of sink down into it real slowly. And then this thing will just kind of sink and fall really slow behind it. That, that's that's the reason this thing works so good is because the subtleness of that little worm or beaver or whatever you have or even flukes and people use flukes on them the difference of this thing 
and the action of it compared to the drop shot working along. It's, it's a totally different technique. Drop shot, it's if they're eating a little above the bottom. This thing's for when you know they're focusing more on the bottom or something that's just kind of cruising slightly over stuff and that's what it is. I mean, you can look at it in a swimming pool and work the two and you can see the total difference in these two techniques. And like I said, I haven't, I haven't fished this technique in a really long time, but I'm going to go out, I'm going to experiment with it, and I'm actually going to fish the Pinot. I think I'm going to play around with the Dell Stero in some future coming up videos. And what's good about this split shot and where it really shines is in tough conditions. When you have hot days, slick, no wind at all, or just slightly any wind, any wind and it's clear water, like, you know, 5, 10, even more visibility. That's when this split shot technique really, really shines. And that's usually the time most people have a hard time fishing because it's clear water, there's no wind, the bass can see everything. That's really, really where this shines. And, you know, that kind of limits it too because, you know, it's better for that. But that's what it's made for. That's kind of when people go to drop shot when there's no wind. It's clear, it's calm. And the funny thing is, I kind of, I have this old Bassmaster. I have tons of old Bassmasters. I have this one, it's from 2013. They actually had a big article on it. Gary Klein, well, she guys might not know who Gary Klein is, 19 classic appearances, really good old school bass. But he's in there, he talks about it. And then I happened to be back about that time, it was about 2003, yeah, it was 2013. I was teaching a guy's name was Eric, he was into doing bass tournaments. He was a viewer of mine. He saw that I used to fish Santa Margarita and San Antonio and Nascimento. And I filmed some shows with him. He wanted me to come down there and show him some spots that I knew that maybe he didn't so he can you know, do better in tournaments than that. And so I have some footage. I'm gonna play it right now. Uh, we were at San Antonio. It was one of those days. It was like 85, hardly any wind or no wind at all. And he started catching fish. And I was using the drop shot time. And I went, what are you using? He goes, oh, I'm using a split shot rig. I went, oh my God. I haven't, I haven't heard about that technique in like 30 years. I'm going to show you that right now, the actual split shot in action. Eric scores with the first fish, a large mouth. Hooks up with a large mouth. Just split shotting, huh, kind of? Modified split shot. Nope, just a split shot. Well, Eric chimes in with. Yeah, do you have some? Uh, a smallie. Do you have pliers? Yeah, I think this is my first smallie on film for my show. Well, you remember I had one on a couple years ago, and it. Yeah, we had that one that you lost. Yeah. That's a good one too. So I like this lake. It has I'm some. Have to break this. I'm about to cut this one off. This lake has some good smallies in it. I've got I had them up to. Close to four pounds, anyway, they broke me off before I got them in. I'm not feeling the bites at all. That's a large mouth, huh? Yeah, and I got them good, too. Look at that, he's bleeding. Eric chimes in with a little large mouth this time. I am not feeling that bite at all. He's bleeding. All right, Eric's got another one. Smalley, largemouth? Smalley, I think. The guy's going down. I lost him. Ah. Uh, look at that. The wind comes up and... So did the fish. Eric gets himself a Smalley. Spawner, too. Yeah. He's got a big old Jeez. belly. He's all red right here. Did you see him? <laughs> That fish shot straight down. <laughs> so there you go. He had it, I mean, I don't know, I guess they had, I don't know, the round split shots, he had something that's kind of cylinder, that's why I say it's modified. It's, it was the same technique. But yeah, he, he, and he had it, he had it like three feet behind, he had it pretty far behind. But yeah, I was fishing a drop shot, he caught the biggest fish, he caught smallies, I didn't catch small. yeah, he, he outfished me with it on a rig that I hadn't heard about for 30 years and haven't fished since. I'm, I'm gonna give it a try now coming up new shows. Yeah, go out when it's really tough, when it's in the middle of summer and it's hot and there's no wind. Try to switch shot, because I'm betting you, you will catch some good fish on it. Well, that's gonna do it for this edition of Tips and Tricks. I hope it helps. Until next time.